Make our labor no be in vain. Make our children no they live like slaves. We don't cry, we don't see shake. And we want to run a labor that is open. A labor where you can access services easily, seamlessly, without having to know anybody, without having to pay bribe, without a labor which is the speech speech, without the, our children being attacked or, or, or being arrested. We want to run an agro-free Lagos. We want to run a Lagos.
tutor of our children. I believe that if I've been given the opportunity to represent the federal constituents, I'm going to make a very great impact in the life of everyone in Surulere 1. Thank you very much. In Surulere Constituency 2, our problem is not far fetched. I know a lot of people uh, dropping from different directions into constituency too. You will notice it if you are driving. Once you get into this constituency, you will not see any good road. You will start experiencing problems. Here is not a village, it is part of Sudan. So, but some people have decided not to participate and put us behind. So I am coming out as a youth, as somebody who is hungry to get things right, to correct these things. I will also tell you, you don't oppose residing in Suriname, going how to do their businesses in VI uh, in, uh, in, in a central business district. I know you people notice that they are building, they are constructing uh, the bridge, they are rehabilitating the bridge as a result of fire incident that happened under the bridge. But let me ask you one question. How many of you know when the rehabilitation started, nobody knows. How many of you know when they will conclude it? Nobody knows. It is just a simple signal to let you know they did not see us as human beings. If you look at that spot where they are constructing that bridge, you will see two gigantic big birds there. It is very simple for a conscious government to just go on that big board and write on it and say, please, fellow negotiators, this bridge will take us two months to construct. Sorry, we can't complete it in two months. It will take one year. belongs to because there seems to be a little bit of confusion between Labour Party logo and another one that looks similar and the biggest confusion is knowing exactly which party 
people this running on. They are all a business, but we have to let them know that a business is not on ballot paper. It's not things that are on ballot paper. So there's a lot of sensitization that are done in. We are going into various markets, the various associations, showing them Labour Party logo, educating them, and putting Labour Party logo in their hands. Okay. You wear it three times a day, representing the the presidential candidate, and also the Labour Party. In the presidential, we the Labour Party in Lagos. Now, as we speak right now, can you just pull out the conclusion and agenda negotiations, and also reflect it to one of us? Okay, I think the whole world know now the key agenda of our president. We are going from product consumption to production. So every Nigeria, we will be able to be, uh, have sufficient food, money, and uh, people resources in our hands to be able to live well and to develop our economy and to the, our economy to benefit everybody, agricultural, manufacturing, service industry, everything works. In good government, in good order for the benefit of the average Nigerian citizen and, and every citizen, in fact. We negotiate, we want to make sure that Lagos works for every negotiation. Every family of Lagos State is in Lagos State for every negotiation. We want to take Lagos to develop as the true cosmopolitan city that it is. We earn so much money in Lagos, in Nigeria. This is the largest economy in, in Nigeria, in, uh, even larger, so, larger than some African states. So why are we having this all this problem? Look from housing to education to infrastructure to everything, it's not working. All the institution has been destroyed because we have 23 years of one party rule state and they have made that institution to work for them instead of it to work for Lagosia. And this is what we are going to rectify. We are going to make Lagos work for Lagosia. We are going to be transparent. There's going to be accountability. There's going to be access, seamless access to services in Lagos. You don't know how to know anybody to be able to access services in, in Lagos State. We are going to be able to make sure that all our children, the widows, are properly looked after. Single mothers, the people with disability, there's equality for everybody. The women get the 35 percent proportional representation at all levels. Of our government. That's a law. Yeah, and above all, man, what is your advice for the youth within Lagos and Lagos and environment against vote buying? I want to speak directly to the youth. 75% or 74% of the electorate registered are youth. That means this election is in your hand. The future of Nigeria is in your hand. It is your responsibility and your civil right to go out there and help this nation. You have to vote. You cannot sell your vote. You have to collect your privacy and you have to vote for the person that has the ability, the knowledge, the strength, the will, the love, the compassion to decide and the know-how to develop Nigeria and Lagos State. And we have been seeing it from all the questions, all the interviews. We know who is able. Take out, take out the city. Take out religion. We know who is able to help this nation. So I'm begging you, the youth, let us do what is right by Nigeria. Let us do what is right by Lagos State. Thank you. Well, I'm the Labour Party candidate for the Lagos Central Senatorial District. So we are here attending a town hall stakeholders meeting with our constituencies. All right. Uh, what has been the level of sensitization to the people of your constituency, basically on the local party? Well, uh, we have done quite a lot of sensitization, but uh, we've gone to the wards, we've done uh, road shows, we've done medical outreach, we've created quite a couple of programs to ensure that uh, our constituencies know and hear about the party and know what the party stands for. It stands for. But we still have a lot to do, I must admit. We still have a lot to do. What kind of advice do you use against vote buying? Well, the youth, 
are you are the leaders of tomorrow. Now, when we say tomorrow, we mean tomorrow. It's not the tomorrows that we were promised and we still have our grandfathers insisting that it's their turn. We are promising you a tomorrow, which means that we will step down. So if you want to be assured of that tomorrow, then you don't sell your vote. Don't sell your vote. Because if you sell your vote, you deprive yourself of the tomorrow that you are going to leave. They are promised. You know, we are the critical point in our country today. And this election is pivotal because this election is a rubber stamp and saying absolutely a resounding no to politics of entitlement, political politics of jungle, politics of depriving the people of development. It's a resounding no. So this election is pivotal. You must vote. This election will determine that the future is assured. My name is Engineer Nebanjo Adela. I'm running for the position of the state. I'm, going, I'm running for the House of Representation for Surinari Constituency 1. That is what I'm going for at the Gold Chamber. Why is an ambitious One of my fundamental things of going for this position is that I believe that at every point in time, there must be a drastic change in the way and manner our economy is going on. There must be a drastic change in the way our democratic process is going to And I believe that with our leader, Peter Obi, which I've shown to the world, that he has all the leadership skill, he has a new idea, he has a new method of running, of running the party and running Nigeria at large. I believe with those new ideas are what we, the youth as well, are bringing on the board, the new initiative we are bringing on the board for the federal constituency. So they really won. If you have been privileged to look at this uh, poster tomorrow, what should the people of the constituency should be affecting you? One of the fundamental things, I'm going there to represent the interest of my people because we have worked together for so long to ensure that we get this victory. I'm going to ensure that everything possible to especially the youth have a good way of doing things. One of the basic things I have to do is job creation for the youth of this constituency. One of the ways to reduce poverty in the world is job creation. So far there is job for our youth. We are guaranteed that there will be reduction in poverty. There will be the crime rate within the world will reduce. The crime rate in Sudan will reduce if our youth have solid jobs that they are doing, if they are being trained, if they know within themselves that they can be these in the world's future. If they are know in themselves, they can be IT experts. If they know within themselves, they can be professionals. They will do the best. And I believe with that, one of the fundamental things I'm doing there for is for job creation for our youth and also for the older people. One of the things I believe is that we must have a health sector that must be able to cater for our elderly people. From the age of 60, they have served the country diligently and they must have a benefit. They have served, it's not until everybody be in the government job, even in the private sector, even as a market woman, one way or other, you have served your nation, even at the highest level. So at the end of the day, we must, they must have some fundamental benefit. So one of the things I'm going to do is to enact more, create more, that will be able to benefit the youth of this country, that will be able to benefit my people, especially in the Sri that will be able to benefit the elderly people within the constituency. I want the youth to come out in masses and vote Labour Party. This is the best time for them to ensure, to guarantee the future of our children, to guarantee the future of the unborn children. I want the people within the city to come out in masses, to come and vote for Labour Party. We have seen it. We need a drastic change within the parties, within the economy of the country. We have seen what APC has done to this country. We have seen what PDP has done. We have seen what APC is doing right now in terms of petrol prices, in terms of inflation, in terms of economy, in terms of everything that is happening within the country. I believe that if Labour Party is being voted into power, we are not saying we are going to do all. It's not possible. But the basic thing, the fundamental thing that every citizen makes in terms of power, 
in terms of education, in terms of security, we'll be, in terms of the economic balance, we'll be able to ensure that we do that. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Sir Michael Indibweze, the chairman of uh, Labour Party in Sweden, the local government of Labour State. Election is less than 25 years this time. What should be your Okay, um, uh, we are not afraid. We are ready for the election. And um, we are telling everybody that supporters of Labour Party, supporters of Obidati, supporters of GRB, and all our other candidates of Labour Party, that the um, Labour Party is ready to take over the country, to take over Lagos. All I say, if you haven't gotten your PVC, go out there and collect your PVC and get ready to come out and do it. As the chairman, what's your word of advice for the youth against the vote buying? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, vote buying is the trend which um, those who have impoverished Nigerians are using against the masses. So uh, they come back every four years to give them two notes to ask them to vote for them. But uh, what we're saying is this. If you collect that peanut and after four years, you suffer for the next four years, you collect all that peanut, you suffer for another four, four years. But we are saying, forget the peanut, come out and wait. But if you cannot forget the peanut, as our president, Shakande, used to say, collect the money. It is our money. It is the money that is supposed to use to work for us. Collect it, use the money, but still vote for His Excellency Peter B. Labour Party. Vote for GRV in Lagos because these are the most sincere people. These are the people passionate about service to serve the people, passionate to serve this country. Our country is really. We need people, young men, who are passionate, who are capable, who are eligible, who are credible, who are accountable, people who can rely on, people who have empathy on the masses, on the suffering of the people. This is, these are the people the Labour Party is giving Nigeria. Look at Peter B. What you, what you, what you need for his country is you. Look at GRB. What we are looking for is you. And the other candidates, you can see them here. All what we are looking for in them. So let us move, push these people into government. And let us see how this country will start to turn around. Above all, what has been the level of sensitization on the recognition of Labour Party voters? Yes, um, uh, now we have done a lot in Sweden, we have done our rallies, world rallies, we have done a lot of sensitization. After this town hall meeting today, the next program we are moving into is door to door campaign. And that the number of the door is aimed at showing the people the lady of Labour Party because. On the election day, we are not going to see any picture. We are not going to see PTV. We are not going to see GRB. All we are going to see is LP and our logo, the wheel and the three person, father, Kipin, and mother, Papa, Mama, Kipin. That's what we see. So that is the next day we will get it on. We continue to do the sensitization of the election until the final day of our Thank you.